I'm in Seoul, South Korea, and today I'm taking you to eat five of the best Korean foods. Oh, and a whole bucket of broth goes in. I can't wait to try that omelet. Whoa, look at that one. Those are the ribs with the bone cage. Mmm. Oh, the rich creaminess. Oh, it's so, so flavorful. There are so many restaurants here that it can be overwhelming. And so I've narrowed it down to five of the absolute must eat Korean foods. And just to let you know, this video will not include any Korean barbecue. That will come in another video, which you can be sure to check out as well. And here we are at the first place. Step out of the car and no joke, you could just smell the kimchi in the air. Okay, this place, it has a complicated name. I'm just, I think I'm just gonna let Jin Siu yeah, say it for us. It's called Kimbuksun Kun Nambi Jip. So check out the menu here. It's all dedicated to kimchi jjigae, but there are a number of other side dishes, and then there's a number of different versions. Now, typically, I've always had the kimchi stew with pork, but they also have a version with tuna and a version with spam. I gotta try the spam. Oh, it's an honor. They have invited us into the kitchen to see a little bit of the process, how they make their kimchi jjigae and how they boil it up. They're also very famous for their rolled omelet. Oh, they really have a system down. And again, kimchi jjigae is all about the kimchi. The kimchi is what makes or breaks kimchi jjigae. So they're not making any mistakes with the kimchi here. They have a huge pan of the kimchi. Um, that first goes into the pan. Then he adds in uh, some chili, some garlic, some other seasonings, some onions. That goes into your pan. From there, you choose your protein of choice, whether that be pork, whether that be tuna, whether that be spam. And then it goes on to the, the burner. And then she adds in some of the broth. And then that boils away until it just all combines with the juices, with the kimchi expertly. In the meantime, she's also making us the omelet that a lot of people order here as well to go with the kimchi jjigae. Oh, and she adds in some tofu as well. Let's that just simmer and boil. and furious, they have the system down. The omelet is ready, let's go eat. Running back to the dining room. Kamsameda. Oh man, and as I was in the kitchen, I mean, we got here right as they opened, so they're not busy at all. People are starting to come in now, uh, but you can tell that they are really preparing for the lunchtime rush. They're uh, assembling the ingredients into the individual pans, getting ready for the rush of kimchi jjigae. Um, they have a system down, they have a process, and they cook in these copper pots I and mean, serve an individual pot per person. But we've got two different ones to try. It smells so good, I'm going in. So this one is the classic, the original, with pork, kimchi, chili pepper flakes, onions in here. Oh man, it smells so good. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, that's hot. Oh, it's still on fire. Oh, it's so good. Mm. You know, because it's all about kimchi, the kimchi is what makes or break the kimchi jjigae. And because kimchi is a, a fermented food, there's such a varying range of flavors and tastes. And how fermented it is and how fresh it is um, can have a huge impact on the flavor of this dish. So you can hear that, tell here that immediately because of the sourness, it's a mature ripened kimchi, providing an amazing acidity, the lactic acid, the sourness, the extra chili flakes in there. Oh, that's incredible. Really has that perfect chewy texture to it. The green onions and leeks in there, the actual onions have totally melted into the stew, making this rich, flavorful broth. Oh, that's so good. Plus, I'm sure that, that broth that she ladled on, I'm sure that's like a porky bone broth as well, just adding to the flavor, enhancing it all. Oh, it's so, such a pure balance of harmony. Oh. Oh, wow, it's good. Okay, I'll try some of the tofu. Maybe put this under the rice in my next bite. Mm. Oh, man. That is 
It's so tasty. And you know, kimchi jjigae is a dish that you'll find at almost all, even general Korean restaurants. But when you come to a place like this that actually specializes in it, that just takes it up to the next level. I mean, they've just perfected their recipe and they make sure, they ensure that the kimchi is at its prime stage for making stew. I'll chase with some of the bean sprouts. Mm. Oh, nice. It's just like chili and crispy bean sprouts. And then I can't, I can't wait to try that omelet either. Mmm. Mmm. Well, the texture of that omelet is incredible. I think there's green onions in there and pretty much that's it. But somehow the texture of the omelet is just so bouncy and dextrous. I think if anything, I'm just submerging it into that kimchi stew. Let it absorb all of that kimchi flavor. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's an egg sponge. Okay, the next version that I just absolutely had to try is the Spam version. Big cubes of Spam, kimchi, tofu in here, all the same ingredients, just massive cubes of Spam. Oh. Okay, gotta admit, that's really tasty. And I mean, Spam is something I grew up eating a lot of when I was a kid, especially as my, my mom is from Hawaii. Spam is also very popular in Hawaii. So that just immediately brings back the good memories. But then wrapped up in this kimchi stew, gives it another dimension. That's like a, a Spam sponge of kimchi. They gave it to us to try. Oh, oh it tastes like, like a 7-Up or a Sprite almost, like a like a lemony lime soda. Mm. And I gotta say, that Spam is extremely tasty. Outstanding. And now that as we ate our meal, literally this in place, every single table is full now. And it's not even lunchtime yet. And one more thing before we leave, it's a huge honor. If you look around, you'll see the, the lids of the, the copper pans that they serve the kimchi jjigae in, which they have people sign them and put them on the wall. So it's a huge honor. That kimchi jjigae was outstanding, fantastic, on the next level, one of the best bowls I've ever had, highly recommended, and we are moving on to the next food. Okay, here we are at the next place, and check this out. It's valet, and they have an entire tower parking lot. This is all their parking. They have a 10-story parking garage all to themselves that's all valet. That's how popular it is. We are here for the next place. Oh, this restaurant is extremely popular, almost continuously a line, especially if you come in the peak meal time, there'll be a line coming out the, the door. And they've been featured, you can see here, they've just been featured in almost every news station, every TV station for their food, especially for their naengmyeon, the buckwheat noodles. Okay, we made it right in. And this is one of Seoul's absolutely legendary Nengmyeon noodle houses, absolutely packed house, always full of people. You just feel the energy and the action in here. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. One of my favorite dishes. So they have that, this is the main Nengmyeon? Yeah, Nengmyeon. Nengmyeon. The bibim. Bibim Nengmyeon? Yeah. Oh, so the, the normal Nengmyeon is like the ice? Yeah, yeah, the ice one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the ice one, and then you have the bibim Nengmyeon with, with the more. chili yeah. sauce? Okay. Bibing Nengmyeon, and then mandu. We gotta get the mandu as well, right? Ah, uh, 추가 mandu. Yeah. 추가 mandu, okay. Nengmyeon, 그리고 mandu 추가로 하나. 일단 부탁드려요. We've already mentioned outside, uh, the name of the restaurant is Pyongyang Myeonok. 
And so the recipes, and this dish is also, I mean, extremely popular in North Korea, where it originates. Uh, but this is as authentic, as just great as it gets, and just such a popular place. So as immediately as you sit down, they just bring over your kimchi, they bring over the radish, they bring over a, a dipping sauce. Everything is fast and furious here. You order, it comes. Uh, they kind of want you in and out as fast as possible. And as we're waiting for the noodles, have a beverage. Oh, it tastes like the, the water that the noodles are boiled in. It tastes like noodle water. Oh, okay. Mandu. Mandu, yeah. Yes. This is like an extra. The main dish that we came to eat here are the ningmian, the noodles, the buckwheat noodles. But this is like a, an appetizer. The mandu, they're huge. Oh, I'm going in. Oh, and so they, oh, you guys are experts. You guys are actually like breaking it in half. <laughs> no, my mouth's nothing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Cheers, guys. Oh, no. That is fully loaded. Wow, it's tasty. Mm. Man, that dumpling is so good. Tastes like a combination of chicken or pork with some noodles on the inside, with some herbs, lots of like green onions, and then the wrapper is just so silky, thin. Man, that's tasty. I do want to load it up with some more of that sauce. Wow. These are some of the heartiest, biggest dumplings ever. And yet at the same time, the inside is kind of like fluffy. And... Mm. And then the kimchi. Mm. It's a totally different style of kimchi as well. It's much more watery tasting and not as heavy on the chili, but really crisp. Um, wow, it's delicious. Mandu is amazing. How's the mandu? Um, it's great. Yeah, it's mandu? Oh. <laughs> Man, just a, just a few of these would be a whole meal. They're so big. Mm. You know, maybe it's not noodles, actually. It's more like a... Bean sprouts, that's what it is. Mm, that's what's giving it that texture, that stringiness, that crunch. There, there it is. Man, the juiciness. One time? Okay. Oh, what is that? Sikto. Vinegar? Yeah. Mustard. Uh, Oh, you are the expert. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> yes? <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. oh, skills. so fast. <laughs> yes. Oh man, that was amazing. He's a true connoisseur, an expert at the Ningmian. I cannot wait to dig in. Okay, so got two different versions. This one is the classic Ningmian, buckwheat noodles with the cold broth soup. Then this one is the bibim, the mixed Ningmian with the chili sauce on top and an egg. Gotta start with the original. So before seasoning, I'll, I'll just try, taste the, the water, the juice. You know, it's not as sour as I was expecting, but it's more meaty and salty and has this like thickness. It's almost like a clear broth gravy. You can really taste like the meaty, probably the bones boiled down to make that soup. Oh man, it's good. But we do need to season. Like the real experts. Okay, so, so the move you do, scoot over the, the beef and the egg. Do one chop because they're really tangly, really sticky noodles, buckwheat noodles, one chop. And then we'll do the, the seasoning. So vinegar, one circle. One circle of mustard. Okay, is that good? Proper ratio. And then 
then stir it up a little bit. Taste that broth again. Yes. A little more acidity to it. And then also that, that mustardy, that mustardiness. Oh, yes. Okay, now I can't wait to dig into the noodles. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, the texture of those buckwheat noodles is incredible. Is it, um, yeah. It's like a Japanese like a style. style. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, so one squeeze of the, it's called gyoza? Yeah, gyoza. Gyoza, it's more like a, like a horseradish. Is it horseradish? Or it's kind of a horseradish. It's like a wasabi. Tastes like wasabi, it has a wasabi taste to it. Um, but it has this orange color to it. So you sprinkle that in. Um, yeah. Oh, so the broth, you really taste the, the, the acidity adds to it with the vinegar. And the gyoza gives it the, a little bit of a horseradishy flavor, but it's not overpowering at all. It doesn't go up your nose at all. Try the noodles next. You should try with the meats as well. Okay. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Oh, I love the texture of the buckwheat. They're not as chewy as some versions that I've had, but you really taste the flavor. The buckwheat, the meatiness. Mm. It's so cold and refreshing. So good. Mm. And then you can chase with some of the, the kimchi. It's really like just so refreshing, um, so clean, so just pure tasting. Okay, let's try it with the meat. There's two different types of meat here. I think it's both beef, but one is more lean, the other is more fatty. So we'll try this this lean piece first. Wow, yeah, that is lean. It has this almost chewy texture to it, but it's really beefy tasting. And there's also a fattier meat as well. Yeah, that meat almost has a jerky texture to it. And now for that fattier meat. Mm -hmm. Wow, you've got the skin. You've got the fat. And I think because it's cold, sure, cold, it kind of doesn't exactly melt in your mouth. It's more of like a, a chewy, hardened fat texture, which is attractive, which is good. Should we mix it up? Here's the pro, yeah. Here's the pro. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Add some broth. Yeah, it's good. Okay, I'm gonna try some of the, the bibim naengmyeon. Mm. Mm -hmm. This one is good as well. You taste the sweet flavor of the gochujang, a little bit of chili in there, and then it has this sesame oil nutty flavor to it. Yeah, and then you taste the flavor of the daikon, the radish in there as well, pieces of radish. And the sauce is quite sweet as well, as opposed to the other version, which is more savory, salty, meaty. Another expert move. <laughs> Take a half of the mandu. Mm. <laughs> oh, and then you put the, the bibim naengmyeon on top. 
The combo bite. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. So refreshing. This might be the only place in the world I've ever had valet noodles. And <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, and how convenient is that? Straight from the parking garage, straight to your car, valet noodles. Okay, we're off to the next place. <laughs> We are walking down this market alley to get to the next dish. And again, this dish is so, so good that you're not gonna wanna miss it. This is the spot. Let's eat gamja tang. There's different types of gamja tang. And most of them, the only difference is the, the second one says kimchi, the first one is uboji, which is like a different type of vegetable. These are just different variations of the gamcha tang. Yes, that's With right. different flavorings? Oh, well, kimchi would always be good, but... What would... So the all flavors are all the same, it's just what ingredients that go in, for, especially for the, for the vegetables, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. What would she recommend? Uh, is the... Let's get her recommendation. Okay. Okay. Whatever she says is the best. Well, this is a small little restaurant just with four tables, uh, but she's been serving for 38 years and specializing in gamcha tang, which is one of the great Korean dishes. I love this place. Family runs, so warm and comforting, and just you can sense that this is going to be something spectacular. We ordered the biggest size and she's going to make it. Now, bean sprouts go in first. Oh, she's so cool. Oh, here it is. That's one of the main components that you absolutely have to have. The pork bones or the side bones or the back bones. Make more bones down here. Those are the outer leaves of the cabbage, which is also important. Potatoes, go on. Oh, yes. It's red chili powder. I think that's crushed up perilla seeds. Perilla seeds. And now over to the broth station. Oh, that broth. Oh, and a whole bucket of broth goes in. And you can see that broth is already red in color from all the all the spices and the chili that she probably adds. Oh, and then perilla leaves go on top to finish it off. Oh, she knows what she's doing. Awesome. There it is. Okay. Kamsameda. Wow. There it is. Such an amazing dish in a giant hot pot, all the pork bones, so much red chili in there. And then she tosses on a handful of fresh perilla leaves on top. You have a hot pot at your table so that it can boil away and start to keep on cooking and heat up and bring all the ingredients together at your table. And also you eat it while it's hot all the time, boiling. That smells so good and she's auntie is just so cool. I think the strategy here is to keep on kind of bathing it in the broth, making sure everything gets coated, simmered, full flavor potential, sinking those potatoes down. Oh, what a dish. And I do remember Ying and I had this dish. I think we just kind of stumbled onto it. First trip to Korea many, many years ago. And ever since that trip, it's been one of our, our go-to dishes, one of the, the greatest of all Korean foods. I love how it just all comes together, how you have all these pork bones to just gnaw and to get all the little bits of meat off. And it's just 
such a warm, comforting, delicious, delicious dish. I think, I think it's been simmering for about five minutes. I think we're ready to eat. Consomera, Auntie has signaled that it's ready to eat. She's serving us the rice. Let's dig in. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Big backbone chunk here. Maybe the potatoes should cook a bit longer. Okay, I'm excited to try the, the soup. I'm try, excited to try the pork and also those, those leaves, but we gotta go in for that pork first. Flaming hot now on that hot pot boiling away. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, that pork is so tender. Completely melts in your mouth. Mmm. You literally do not need to chew. You could chew that with your lips. Melts on your tongue. All those little bits. Plus the fat mixed in from the bone. And we'll move over. Um, oh yeah, I mean actually, I do want to immediately, desperately want to chase that with a piece of daikon kimchi. Totally understand the, the chasing combinations, the contrast in your mouth. Oh yeah, it's good. Okay, gonna chase that now with some of that broth and vegetables. Mm. Oh, that broth is so good. I love the chewy texture of the vegetables. And it's those older outer leaves of the cabbage. As opposed to other cabbage, it has more of a, a little bit of a chewier texture to it. Then you can really taste how the broth has been infused by those perilla leaves, giving it a little bit of a minty, a little bit of a licorice taste to it. And then also, I believe that those seeds that she added on top were either crushed sesame seeds or maybe they were crushed perilla seeds as well, giving it that aroma as well. Okay, now another thing that you can do is take off some of the the meat. Just, just peel, look, it's spoon, spoon tender, spoon tender pork. Peel back some of that pork, oh, revealing the bone. And then you can grab some of the, the pork and dip it into this sauce. And then you can eat it along with rice. Mm. Oh, that sauce. A little, tastes a little bit mustardy, a little bit soy sauce. That sauce, mm. a little bit of that horseradish kind of sauce, I believe. A little bit sweet, it's almost like a honey mustard, almost. Onto the rice. Oh, wow. Gamjatang, again, one of the great Korean dishes. But her version is incredible, so good. And you can tell her passion for it. She just does it so well. That just has all the right things that you want. Juicy, tender pork, chewy, fragrant cabbage leaves, perilla seed leaves, chili pepper. Mm. You can suck, you can chew. Things melt in your mouth. All the flavors, the gelatin bits, the collagen bits, the cartilage bits, they're all there. I mean, it is without a doubt that bones offer the most flavor. And if ever you can get close to the bones of any, any kind of meat you eat, that's where the most condensed, strongest flavor of any meat is. And so when you have a bowl that's actually consists of full of bones, you can guarantee that the flavor is just gonna be on the next level. The meatiness. Wow. So we haven't yet tasted another one of the main components, the potato. You gotta have a potato with gam tang. And then I might reach in for another, another bone in. Okay, I'm supposed to use this with the pliers. That is a lot easy, easier. There we go. Whoa, look at that one. Those are the ribs with the bone cage. We'll take it. Look at the way the meat just releases from the bone. By now the potato is so soft. And again, it's just absorbed that. Whoa, it's slippery. Let's dip. Potato is so hot, so good. Yeah, but anyway, gam tatang, an amazing Korean dish, something that you absolutely have to try when you come to Seoul. And Auntie makes an extraordinary version. Mm. This place is called Shigo Kamjakuk. 
highly recommended, absolutely outstanding. And the owner, they're so friendly. The family, they're so friendly. And next up on this ultimate Korean food tour, we are on our way to eat another one of my favorite dishes, a dish that is probably the most soothing dish in all of Korea. It has medicinal benefits. It's just so good. That's the place. Nice. Wow, beautiful building. You step inside, and this is a, a heritage building that's been around for 100 years. The restaurant has been here for 40 years, but just the preservation, the historical building within modern Seoul, I always love it. So you kind of step into this, this courtyard. Oh, we got a little private room here. Take off our shoes. Nice. Ah, so we came here to specifically eat the dish, which is salt, called samgetang, which is a ginseng chicken soup, and usually it includes a whole spring chicken or a young chicken in a hot earthenware bowl, which has just been boiled, simmered, the bones, uh, stuffed with rice and ginseng, and it's so good. Okay. Oh, here it is. Oh, nice. Oh, man, that aroma smells incredible. Oh, and they have some black sesame seeds and some sunflower seeds on top with the boiling chicken broth. A bunch of either leek or scallions shredded on top and then served with all of the sides, kimchi, green peppers, radish, and rice. Oh, and definitely some of the ginseng liquor. It comes boiling over, but let's, as soon as that settles down, calms down, let's go immediately go in for that broth. Oh, it's thick. And it has such an incredible nuttiness, a nutty aroma to it. Mmm. Mm. Oh, the sunflower seed. Oh, the thickness of the skin and the chicken just boiled down all of that. The juices and the oils, the ginseng. Oh, it's so good. So pure. And then you can follow that with tasting some of the ginseng liquor. Oh yeah, you really smell that, that earthiness of the ginseng. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, and then you can just kind of go back and forth. Okay, now we need to tear into that chicken. Just take off those, those leeks, let them kind of marinate in the in the hot broth, and then you can see that it's an entire chicken. Spring chicken, young chicken, entire chicken in a bowl. The drumsticks are here, the entire chicken, and it should be, again, stuffed with a combination of ginseng, spices, and rice on the inside. Maybe some nuts as well. Um, but maybe just tear off one of those drumsticks. Or is that a wing? Oh, that's a whole thigh. That's the whole thigh drumstick combo. Oh, man. Beautiful. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, that chicken melts in your mouth. Mm. It is so tender, but because it's been just absorbed by its own broth, it just remains so juicy, so much flavor, condensed, packed into the chicken. The bones just literally slide out completely clean. Oh, that's delicious. At this point, you may want to chase your bite with kimchi. They do have a little bit of extra salt here. You can dip in if you want a little bit of... Oh no. Oh no, that's probably too much. <laughs> okay, that, that was a bit more salt than expected. What you can do to get rid of it though is just kind of water it down from the... Put it back in the soup to... It just slid right up. It's so tender, it just slid right up. Mm. Oh man, that chicken is so succulent, buttery. And I'll chase with one of these green chilies. And the classic move, dip it in the, the bean paste. Mm. And chase. Mm. Oh yeah. A little bit spicy, so crisp, green. Mm. Let's go back to the chicken. And one of the things I love about the chicken itself is that it's actually not that salty. So you can judge, you can add your own salt according to your liking. And also, I mean, if you if you don't want to eat it that salty, because it does have medicinal benefits, it has health benefits to it, um, you don't need to make it that salty. But let's tear into the, the, the whole interior of the chicken and see what's stuffed inside. 
Okay, here we go into the into the crevice. Oh, oh, that entire <laughs> the entire carcass just lifts off like a lid, and you can see nestled inside of there a oh, whole cloves of garlic, rice. Is that a water chestnut? I think. Oh, beautiful. Oh man, I'm gonna scoop that up. Oh, and you can smell the richness of the chicken fat all just converging onto that that center. Oh, oh. Okay. Don't take a giant bite out of the the crevice of the chicken. It's still on fire. Oh yeah. But so good. The rice just melts in your mouth. You really taste the flavor of the ginseng in the cavity. Oh, that's so good. Okay. And then that would be good taste with some garlic dipped into the bean paste. Mm -hmm. And a piece of kimchi. Okay, and then on to more of the chicken. Mm. And that broth is just so, so gentle and calming and soothing. Thick from the skin, medicinal from those herbs, the ginseng. This is another one of those Korean dishes that just warms you from the inside out. And I mean, if, especially if it's cold, if it's the winter time, just goes down and just internally, you're just warm. Ah. Okay, and now onto the, the white meat of the chicken here. Like it, it, the way it literally just pulls apart from the bone. Complete effortlessness. Has to be the easiest chicken, whole chicken to eat on earth because it's just so tender. And now that we've dug our way through the chicken, you can see that there's an entire root of ginseng just tucked within that cavity. That's what's the main seasoning, medicinal property of this entire soup. Mmm. It's really tender. Almost has this strong medicinal hint of a bitterness taste to it. Almost carroty at the same time. Uh, but like, oh, it's good. And a sweetness at the same time. Korean ginseng. Delicious. Mm. Some of the bones and the, especially the the joints and the the knuckles and all that cartilage is boiled down so soft that you can just chomp through it. You can eat it all. I think my favorite part is probably that rice infused with ginseng and absorbed with the chicken broth. It's just so warm and comforting. Wishbone? Ha ha ha. One, two, three. <laughs> no, you can't use two hands. No. <laughs> oh, you won. Yay. Okay, you. That was so good. And you can actually literally feel your body, the internal heat of your body rising after you eat that dish. Oh, it's so soothing, so comforting. Oh, that was good. We're at the next place. It's called Pro Ganjang Kechang. And you can just see that this place, I mean, it's been visited by dozens, countless celebrities, famous people. And it just has this kind of almost an aura to it. We're coming to the back where we're gonna have a private room, I think, in the back here. And that is what we came to eat. The next dish that we're eating on this ultimate Korean food tour, Ganjang Kechang, which is the raw soy marinated Korean crabs. And I believe that they're blue crabs. It's so beautiful. I mean, they pop those open. You can see the row, the orange row, just sprouting out. It's golden in color, and you know it's gonna be a good food when they give you gloves. And these are beautiful, beautiful pieces of crab, just straight up blooming, blooming like ice cream, glistening golden. Crab lollipop. Mmm. Oh, the rich creaminess. Oh, it's so 
so flavorful, so rich, has this amazing saltiness, a little bit of a sweetness, like melts in your mouth, straight up crab pudding, ice cream of the sea. And it's so incredibly clean tasting. Oh man, this is an absolute delicacy in Korea. You know why it's loved so much because it's so tasty, so clean, literally. It just dissolves on your tongue. And it's cool, it's refreshing. Mm. The creaminess is unbelievable. And yeah, definitely after tasting it, it is good to empty it onto your rice. You can actually almost squeeze it. You can squeeze it and the, all the, oh, it just comes out. The meat, the roe, all comes out. The raw crab. And then from there, you can keep eating it with your rice. All that flavor just coating the rice. Mm. And that contrast of the, the cool, cold, refreshing crab with the hot rice. Oh, that's good. Wow, that is extraordinary. What is it called? Beseng E. Beseng E. Beseng E. Yeah. I'm gonna remove, take a little time out from the crab and we're gonna move on to some other delicacies that they have here. And it's a rare seaweed called meseng e, which is really fine, like angel hair, like hair of seaweed. We have a soup and we also have a, a pancake made from the same seaweed. Oh, you can see it's kind of thickened as well. I think that's coming from the seaweed as well. Oh man, it is hairy. And it just kind of, it's so smooth, just kind of goes down. It's really fine, really delicate. Oh, that's delicious. I would say that it's not even like seafoody. It's not even oceanic tasting. It's just extremely clean, delicious. And then we have a pancake made from the same, it's the same seaweed. That's why it's so green. Again, rare to find and an absolute delicacy. Mm -hmm. It's not a strong flavor, it's not a strong seaweed. Really neutral tasting, it has a little bit of a texture to it, but it's very nutritious. Really fine, really delicate. Oh, that's really good. We have some more seaweed as a, a banchan, so we have a lot of things from the sea here. Mm. That has a totally different texture. More of that crunch, that kelp crunch to it. Tastes a little bit garlicky and a little bit sesame. We have another version of the crabs, which is called nyangnyong gechang. Now these are, again, raw crabs. This time it's marinated in more of a, a pepper paste. Let's grab a chunk here. Oh man, might we need we may need to re-glove on this. Reapply, reinsert into the glove um, so that we can, because I think they, they don't want you to get all that crab juices onto your fingers as you squeeze it. You're gonna have to squeeze it. Oh, watch this, let's squeeze. Squeeze, let that roe and the, the raw meat come out. Oh, it just squeezes out like toothpaste. And then, Okay, we'll have to eat that with rice, but then we'll definitely come to, to, to clean out all the rest of those, those shells. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, that one is amazing. Oh, man. Melts in your mouth. It's a stronger flavor with that pepper paste with the sesame seeds. Yeah. That's delicious. From here, definitely have to go back and just suck out all the rest of the meat. Mmm. Mmm. That pepper paste is a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet, and this well-rounded flavor that just complements the, the creaminess, the melt-in-your-mouth crab. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 
I can really taste the quality here. And I've had this dish, you know, in, in a variety of other restaurants. This one in particular, the crabs they're using on the next level, highest quality, absolutely blooming with golden roe. And their marinades, their sauces are just balanced to perfection. Okay, we did also get another side dish with some raw marinated shrimp and some abalone. I'm not sure if they're raw or cooked or just marinated in that soy dressing again. Mm. Tastes a little bit cooked because raw abalone tends to be like really crispy and have this crunch to it. I think it's cooked. Oh man. Mm. The sweetness, naturally. The marinade is just more like this beautiful, well-rounded soy sauce. The freshness of the abalone, just the leathery, velvety texture. Oh, it's good. This is the best part and how we eat. The head yeah. with all of the roe and the juice in there. Uh, if, if I go with my friends, we never ever surrender. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like a digging, digging deep inside. Digging deep, deep, deep inside and get everything out from the corner, like this, digging every single from the corner. And then the rice. Oh yeah, rice. Into the shell. Oh. Okay. Rice into the shell. Okay. And then, <laughs> like a bibimbap style. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the best part and best way the to best enjoy the soy crab. Okay. Best part of ganjang gejang? Ganjang gejang, yes. And to this moment, there's no friend, there's no wife, there's no family. <laughs> Just a compete <laughs> to get it. <laughs> that is when you eat ganjang gejang with your yes, friends. Yes. No more friends. It's every no man for family. himself. No brothership. Every, every man for yourself. <laughs> yes. Only for us. <laughs> Mm. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we gotta follow Jeff's example. The greatest delicacy of the head. Get all of that out of the crevasses. Oh, and this one even has the pepper paste all within. That's just straight up. Okay, rice goes in. More rice. And then just totally just mix it up. Mix it up. Get it fully coated. Every grain of rice must get coated in, in crab roe juices and pepper paste. Wow. Mm hmm. That's one of the best bites possible. Just absorbed into the rice with that pepper paste the sesame seeds, the crab ice cream. Oh, it's so good. Wow. We've had some incredible food and I'll have all the restaurants that we ate at in the description box below, but Seoul truly is a food paradise. There's such a diversity, such an incredible array of Korean food that you don't wanna miss when you come to Seoul. I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching this video and also to the Korea Tourism Organization for arranging my entire trip. And from here, we're traveling all the way around South Korea. We're on an ultimate Korean food road trip. You're not gonna wanna miss any of the videos in this series, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching, good night from Seoul and I will see you on the next video.